Hello, this is Stuart Fleming. In tonight's video, we're going to go over how to create a standalone WebLogic server domain. This will be, for all purposes, a testing domain, as it will not have all of the components necessary and run all of the services necessary for a production environment. We're going to be basing this off of a white paper that is available on the internet at this web page. It's um, deploying applications to WebLogic Server using JDeveloper and WS Console. It uses the Tura application, which has got some, it's, it's part of the 11G handbook um, that was written by the same people listed here. Uh, however, the Tura has some Java code that has been depreciated, so we're going to use a newer application. You can download the information. It's a very good paper. It does go over the right things that you need to know uh, to uh, deploy and create a WebLogic domain. And also, if you're interested, there's a very good article on ADF Insider, web uh, video, I should say, about um, deploying to WebLogic and the security necessary. So those are what we'll be following as the steps. Now what we're going to do first is create a WebLogic domain and we're actually going to use the same WebLogic server that comes installed with JDeveloper. And the reason for that is you have to be very careful about what version of WebLogic you use with which version of JDeveloper. And um, so if you use the same version that's installed, you're obviously going to have something that will not cause any problems. Click on, uh, excuse me, click on it and you will get this pop-up. And we're going to create a new WebLogic domain. And these are the services that come with this. According to the article, we choose this one. Although if you really wanted to make sure everything was selected, you could select all of them. Now we're going to configure it. I'm just going to put it in base domain and I'm going to change the location to C temp. logic and password welcome one in my case and uh, we don't have a second option here but if you're doing a real web logic install I think you'll get the J rocket version of the JDK if you want and then you can also select production but we'll leave this as is these are some things that you can modify when you're doing a real WebLogic install, you would definitely want to do this. But for our purposes, we're just going to use the base. And that's it. It'll take a minute. And you can see that it's already being created. And when this is done, which we are done, I'm going to start it manually. If you come in here, you can see that there is a bat file for Windows and a um, script file or a shell script file for Linux type environments. And we'll just start it. And this will take a, a minute to run. So I'm going to turn off the video for a second. Okay. You can now see that the WebLogic server has been created. And if we open up a yeah, we'll just go over here and you can open up I always use a bookmark obviously um, it's going to have your host name and then the port is 7001 as opposed to the port that uh, belongs with the integrated server and then the console login so if you just type this in you'll get to it or I believe 
Let me just hold on for a second. Yes, I was correct. If you go to Start Menu, it actually writes it in your user projects here, Base Domain and Admin Server Start, and you can actually start it from here. But this is for the web logic, which we now open up using the login that we supplied when we created it. And this is the screen that it opens up to. Let's just take a quick look here. Uh, data sources here is where you would add data sources. And we'll do that right now. I have an application here that I've been working on. And um, the first thing you would do is double click the app module and go to the configurations app module local. You can press here or double click it and get this. And you want to make sure that when you deploy, uh, it's set to JDBC data source. Sometimes when you're doing testing on the client server, or I should say in your development, uh, using the integrated server JDBC URL is faster, especially when you um, undeploy something. But this is what you want, HRDS, OK? So I'm going to actually copy that and come over to here, generic, and we'll just call it HR database. HR is fine. No space there. And we'll copy that in there. OK, we're going to use the Oracle Thin Driver. I don't do this yet. Database name. Now, this is where you would type in, obviously, I've already done this before, HR, 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 next. Test the configuration. If something goes wrong, then you probably mis misentered some of these. And actually, um, it does one of these quick tests here. Now, the other thing that you want to do, and the last thing you want to do, is connect it to the server, which is considered a target. If you forget that, you can go in and go to targets here, and it's checked, or you can recheck it. So that's one thing that we're going to do. The other thing that we're going to do is um, in my security, in my application, I have users. I have Doug and I have Stuart. And Doug is an ER manager and Stuart is a U ER user. So let's go to our home up here. And uh, we do security realms down at the bottom there. Click on My Realm, Users and Groups. Now, one thing that you want to consider here is we're doing a test server. If you're doing a production server, you probably wouldn't even be doing this. Your WebLogic administrator would. But if you ever had to, it would probably be pulling in information from an LDAP server, something like an email or Active Directory. So just remind, be reminded that we are uh, just putting in information here um, for testing. And um, you want to have this something you can remember because, of course, we're just testing. And I'm going to do all lowercase. was easy enough. Now you can see here that we also have groups. Okay, I'm going to do ER manager. And we'll do ER user. You can see that I've tested this before. So we've got our two groups now. And that is pretty much it. As far as um, configuration goes, there is one other thing I could suppose I could do. In deployments, if you click on deployments over on the left here, you have a lot of uh, libraries here that you really don't need to show. So I always do customize this table and exclude libraries when displaying deployments. And it's always nice to set this to 100 just in case. There's only a few. 
You can probably get rid of this application too, by the way. And that basically is um, how to configure a external WebLogic server. I hope this was of help and have a good evening.